might have the strictest parents in the world. After each exam, they call up my teachers and ask who got the highest marks in my class. If it isn't me, I get punished. Badly. Last time, they made me build a small wooden cabin in our backyard. Then I had to live in it for one week. It wasn't too bad because I still had a mattress. But I often woke up at night because some insect had crawled into my pants. And their punishment worked. I studied harder than ever before. But there was one problem. We had this genius kid in our class. His name was Logan, and despite never paying attention, he still got a hundred out of a hundred points in each math exam. But he was also using cheat sheets. So during the exam, I stood up and said, "Logan is cheating again. Please check his pencil case." The teacher found the cheat sheet and said, "Logan, you will get an F." And of course he was pissed. He started picking on me nonstop. I wasn't bothered though. I still had my best friend Maya to support me. But then Logan invited her on a date and became her boyfriend soon after. It was so obvious that Logan was only using her to take revenge on me. But it gets worse. Maya broke off all contact with me, and one week later, my teachers found out that I had plagiarized some of my previous Spanish essays from the internet. Maya was the only one who knew about it, so she must have told them. As a consequence, I got a C instead of an A on my report card in Spanish. When my parents saw it, they completely freaked out and forced me to study nonstop during the summer break. It was pure torture, and when I got back to school, all I could think of was taking revenge on my ex best friend Maya. So when she got the flu and didn't come to school, I went over to Logan and said, "Hey, I know how much you hate me, but could you please help me with the math problem? If I don't solve it, my parents will punish me terribly." I shamefully looked down, but Logan seemed empathetic and said. Well, okay, I'm gonna help you. After we finished, I said, "My parents are looking for a tutor for me, and you're the smartest guy I know. They would pay you twenty-five dollars per hour if you're interested." What? Twenty-five dollars per hour? Of course I'm interested. But you would have to come teach me at my home. Sure, no problem. But what about your girlfriend Maya? Oh, she will understand. Of course Maya didn't understand. She tried everything to keep Logan from visiting me. Of course, Maya didn't understand. She tried everything to keep Logan from visiting me, but he needed the money to support his family and kept coming. I had bought her boyfriend, and now it was only a matter of time until I would seduce him. At first, I tried old school flirting, smiling and touching his knees, the usual. But he laughed it off and said, "You're really trying to steal me away from Maya, aren't you? I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I'll stay loyal." Meanwhile, Maya became more and more aggressive towards me. One time, she even put chewing gum into my hair during class. I didn't notice it right away, so I had to cut it out with scissors. I wasn't mad though. The more she hurt me, the easier it was to justify stealing her boyfriend. Next time he came to teach me, I was only wearing a crop top and short leggings. I caught him staring at my body a couple times, and each time I said, "Hey, stop looking at me. You have a girlfriend, don't you?" He never responded. But when the class was over, I gave him a really long hug, saying, "I wish you were my teddy bear." I wasn't sure how long he could resist me, so the following class, I put on a cat costume. Of course, it was weird, but also looked sexy. So I asked him, "Do you like it?" And he responded, "Wow, it does look great. But what is it for?" Oh, I think you know what it's for. We sat down, and I continued, "Can we talk about Maya for a moment?" Yeah. Okay, I know she's super pretty, prettier than me. But you're a smart guy, so why wouldn't you prefer being with a smart girl like me? Well, I really love her. Oh, don't lie to me. I know Maya very well. She's so boring and dull. Wouldn't you rather have a girlfriend that's interested in science? Maybe, but I still love Maya. Sure, but I have an uncle who works at SpaceX. You know the rocket company. Of course, I know SpaceX. Well, he will give me a factory tour this weekend. If you want, you can join us. Logan was hesitant, but finally said, "Okay, but it needs to stay a secret. If Maya finds out about it, she wouldn't understand that this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity." Well, the SpaceX tour was great. We stood right next to a huge rocket, and Logan seemed so happy. What he didn't know was that I had secretly taken a selfie of us two at the factory. When the tour was over, I immediately sent it to Maya. She didn't respond, but when I got back to school, she had told everyone how I was trying to steal her boyfriend. Suddenly, every girl was gossiping about me, and it was brutal. 
Then Logan sent me a message saying, Hey, after the photo you sent to Maya, I can't see you again. The tutor lessons are over. I responded, No problem, but please pick up the folders that you left at my home. He came over, and right after he had entered my room, I locked the door. He said, What's going on? And that's when I hugged him, saying, I can't live without you. Please be my boyfriend, please. I will do anything for you. That's how much I like you. He didn't respond, so I went further and kissed him. I knew he wanted it as badly as I did, and finally he grabbed my neck to kiss me back. But then he stopped, saying, Oh, damn it. What have I done? And I responded, Don't worry. You followed your feelings. You prefer smarts over beauty. You prefer me over Maya. I guess you are right. Maya's so freaking annoying. I've never enjoyed spending time with her, but I also don't want to break her heart. Well, I had my ways to convince Logan otherwise. The next day, he told her he didn't love her anymore. Afterward, we waited two weeks before we finally announced our relationship. Of course, Maya and her friends absolutely despise me now. But it doesn't matter, because I have a boyfriend who protects and loves me. Alone. Even my friend Mandy was there. She was going to be my maid of honor. While we were eating, Dad suddenly started bragging about how I had become a doctor. And Anna was working at a nail salon. Dad, I don't work there. I own it. I also make nail art videos on TikTok. It's viral. Whatever. It isn't as important as uh, being a doctor. Look at the life she's made for herself. If only you were even an ounce like her. What Anna does is good, too. Whatever it is. Mom, Dad, you both are impossible. And Cora, you are such a show-off. You invited us all to show off your new house and your fiancé, who is my leftover, by the way. Pathetic. What? I invited you because I wanted to make you my bridesmaid, but you don't deserve it. And Eric was with you a long, long time ago. So just get over it. Remember, he dumped you. After that, Anna glared at me and all of a sudden threw the soup in my face. My eyes burned. I wiped my face and then ran after her outside. I would have slapped her hard if Dad hadn't pulled me back. For the first time ever, Mom and Dad stood between us and tried to stop the fight instead of just yelling. Girls, stop this at once. Anna, how can you do this to your sister after how much she helped you? Huh? What do you mean? Anna, it was Cora who gave you the money for the nail salon, not me. She told me not to tell you. She looked shocked for a minute, and then she turned angrily to me. Why? You helped me just to shove it in my face, huh? Anna, you are impossible. The party is over. After everyone was gone, I felt so sad thinking about the hate Anna had for me. I knew we were this way from the start, all thanks to our parents, but after school, both of us hadn't tried to make things better. On the day of the wedding, I really wished my family was complete and Anna was there. Right when it was time for me to walk down the aisle, someone barged in. It was Anna, dressed in the pink bridesmaid's dress with tears in her eyes. Um, I'm not good at this, Cora. I wanted to say I'm sorry. I'm so sorry for everything. I was a bully. I had so much anger bottled up and I took it out on you. Please forgive me. Anna, you came, and that's all that matters now. Yeah, I couldn't miss this. Let me say this, Cora. I can't promise to be nice to you all the time, because that's just not how our relationship works. But I swear, I will try my best to make it up to you for the rest of my life. And to prove it, I want to apologize to Mandy, too. It was unbelievable to see Anna say sorry to Mandy. The two of them hugged. And when I learned that Anna had visited Mandy's place to talk, I was happy. My sister was trying to change herself. I am sorry, Anna. I I'm sorry, too. <laughs> Let's get you married now. Hey, I'm Sarah, and for the last few years, I've been going to this super expensive private school for rich kids. Let me share a few stories of the craziest things I've seen happening here. First of all, almost all guys in my grade have several sugar babes. It really sucks. I mean, how shall I find a boyfriend in school if most guys here can date pretty much any model they want? You see, I'm just a normal girl. I grew up middle class. And only when my perfect mom, who is both a professor at a prestigious university and super beautiful, married a well-known Wall Street billionaire, I suddenly had to move to New York City and was put into this school for rich kids. At first, I felt super uncomfortable here. Everyone wore designer clothes and looked at me like I was a misfit. Maybe because I wore H&M and didn't have the latest iPhone. 
The cool kids completely ignored me, so I asked my mom's billionaire husband if he would give me some money for shopping. He kindly gave me $200, but I told him, I'm sorry, but that's just not enough. My classmates all wear designer clothes. I think I'll need at least $3,000 to buy good enough clothes to fit in. He shook his head in disappointment, but gave me the money anyway. Then I went on a wild shopping spree, buying tons of super fancy clothes. Sounds fun, but it wasn't. Because I had worn modest clothes all my life, and now I was betraying my own values just to make other people like me. It felt wrong. However, dressed like a rich girl, I went back to school and asked some of the cool kids how their weekend was. A girl responded, Oh, it was so funny because we saw a poor homeless woman on the streets, and then we had a hilarious idea. We bought an $800 Dolce & Gabbana sweater and gave it to her. It's so funny because everyone will believe it's a fake one, even though it's real. I started laughing with them, even though I thought it was absolutely disgusting. I mean, with that money, they could have rented her a home for a month or bought her food for weeks. At least they accepted me into their clique. We were sitting down at an expensive restaurant when one of them spotted a beggar outside. He was still in his teens, and I felt so bad, but one of the girls said, Why don't we invite him to dine at our table? We order expensive food and wait until he goes to the restroom. That's when we sneak out of the restaurant so that he has to pay the bill, which, of course, he can't. They all started laughing again, and one girl went outside to invite the homeless to eat with us. He looked tired, and I asked him to tell us his story, which was heartbreaking. He said his family had thrown him out when he was only 14, and ever since, he'd been living on the streets. We ate together, and the other girl started giggling when he told us he'd go to the restroom. Once he was gone, we all stood up and left, but I quickly threw $300 on the table so he wouldn't get in trouble for not being able to pay. Things got even crazier when I was invited to my classmate Sergei's birthday party. He was only 16 but living in his own New York City penthouse. I did some research and found out that it cost $30,000 a month to rent it. Even more shocking was that he had three gorgeous models standing next to him at all times. At one point he said, Me and my sugar babes welcome you to my home. I guess when you're rich you can buy love, or at least flesh. And Sergei was Russian, and we all know that Russians love to brag about how rich they are morning when I went to check my Facebook feed, I realized all my male friends were missing from my friends list, including my cousins, my uncles, and even my dad. I'd given my boyfriend Frank my Facebook login so he could upload some photos for me, but I didn't think he would mess with my account. When I asked him if he knew about it, he said, oh, you notice they are gone? So you are paying attention to other men. I knew it. What the hell? Frank had deleted all my male friends. Looking back, I should have left him then, but I figured it was just a stupid joke. However, his behavior only got worse. I was working at a marketing agency, and I would take breaks with my co-workers to vape outside. We'd talk about our various projects and make important decisions during those breaks. Well, one day I got home from work, and Frank confronted me, saying, I saw you hanging out with other guys at work today. Wow. He had stalked me in my workplace, watching me when he should have been doing his own job. Things were getting creepy. I told him he didn't need to be jealous because I wasn't interested in any of my colleagues like that. But he got really angry and punched the wall. I was afraid he would hit me next, so I told him I wouldn't do it anymore. Big mistake. After that, he wanted more and more control over me. Like, he wouldn't let me wear certain clothes like shorts or tight shirts. And then he stopped me from talking to any of my male friends, including Steve, who is gay. Every day I got back from work, he would ask to go through my phone. At first, I wouldn't let him. I mean, everyone deserves some privacy, right? And there were text conversations with my friends where we talked about things I didn't want Frank to know about. But if I didn't do what he wanted, he'd scream at me for hours. He'd scream at me for hours and start trashing our apartment. It was so emotionally draining. Eventually, I gave in and let him check my phone. But I started deleting my text conversations before I came home so he couldn't see anything. It was horrible. I guess if he could, he would have locked me in the house and not let me go anywhere without him. It took a while, but at last, I realized things couldn't go on like that, and I broke up with him. For the first few weeks, he stalked me, and one day, he even climbed up my parents' house to look through our bathroom to watch me take a shower. After that, I got a restraining order from him. 
which means he isn't allowed to get near me or contact me in any way or he will go to jail. However, that was two years ago, and Frank still sends me messages from anonymous phones. I don't want to change my number because it would feel like I'm letting him win. But whenever I see a text from him, it stresses me out. His last one was really weird. I got another girl pregnant and it's all your fault. See how crazy he is? How could that be my fault? I wish he would just leave me alone. I don't understand why he's trying to make my life miserable. But luckily, I'm dating Nick now and our relationship is much healthier. He respects my boundaries and we trust each other. I feel secure with him. Sure, Nick can be a bit possessive sometimes, but so can I. There's nothing wrong about being a little possessive. It's only natural. But when you try to control someone's whole life, you have some issues and maybe you should get help. I've done some research and it's frightening how many guys actually killed their girlfriends because they were jealous of them just talking to another man. It's insane. So, although I'm not a professional therapist, my advice would be to stay away from anyone who tries to completely control your life. Those people are evil and only care about what they can get out of you. They don't care about your happiness at all. Please be careful.